And you can't hear me. You're probably hearing me now. Hello, YouTube. How you doing out there? Hi. Good to see you all again. So, yes, again, sorry about the delay. I had to find the props in order to make tonight's game of Triviumatic work. But we found the props. Tonight's game of Triviumatic will work as it usually does. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Craig Reed, and this is the Triviumatic Happy Hour. Yay. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you have never, ever played our game of Trivimatic before, then you are in for a treat. But before we get there, make sure you go to your favorite app store, whether it be the Google Store, the Android Store, the iTunes Store, I believe your local bodega might also have some apps. Make sure you go there and make sure you download the Trivimatic app. There it is on my phone, right next to all the other live trivia stuff. Yeah, that's right. I still play HQ. <laughs> so there you go make sure you download that app and of course get ready to play tonight's game because we are going to have a good time esta noche uh that's the extent of my spanish by the way esta noche now <clears throat> crack the knuckles let's get loose we're going to get fun ladies and gentlemen tonight's game number is 080-351 once again 080-351 there you go uh, some people say muted. Let's just That's make good. sure that... Oh, yeah, okay, I can, hear, I can hear me. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, back talk in a second, ladies and gentlemen, because of the time difference. 
But anyways, 080 uh, 351 is tonight's game. We are going to get started as we always do with, of course, round number one. Round number one is history mystery. <laughs> history mystery is the name of the round. As always, we're going to start with eight questions about historical events that have occurred on June 4 on years gone by. By the way, if you have a birthday on June 4, happy birthday. I know my sister had a birthday a couple days ago, so happy belated birthday, Craig's sister. Yeah. All right, let's get tonight's game started with round number one, history mystery. Here we go. Number one, a 1942 naval battle between U.S. and Japanese forces at what Pacific Atoll, roughly equidistant between North America and Asia, is considered a major turning point of the Pacific theater during World War II. Now, of course, uh, I just read you the question. You can see the question on your screen, and of course, along with the question that you can see on your screen are four possible answers, one of which is the correct answer. It is up to you, that's right, you, to select that correct answer. The sooner you select that correct answer, the more points you can earn based on however, more, however many points is left on your ticker. Do be warned, if you do, you can change your answer, and if you do want to do so, you're going to earn fewer points because that ticker is still ticking all the way to the end of the question. Speaking of, tick-tock, 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 that ticker's just about done. The correct answer, by the way, is Midway. Midway was the correct answer there. The American victory in the Battle of Midway was the first major naval, naval victory by Allied forces against those Japanese. Yeah, Midway. By the way, fun vacation spot if you want to go like middle of the world so we got 12 people in the room playing tonight's game of triviumatic of course that number can change my name's staying the same there we go i gotta get my lefts from my rights let's keep going question number two the first pulitzer prizes were awarded on june 4 1917 to laura e richards and marty howe elliott for a biography and jean jules jusserand for history since then, Pulitzer Prizes have expanded to all of these categories, except for which of the following? Again, it's a select the answer sort of deal. We got four things on your screen, only one of which is correct. Which one? Mm, yeah. Again, I, I'm not of I'm not of sound body or mind to let you know what that correct answer is, because I do believe on, on the contract that I signed to start doing this thing. Uh, it it's explicitly says, do not reveal the answer before it is time. Speaking of revealing the answer, we're going to have fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Mm. Hopefully you did select that correct answer of sports reporting. Sports reporting. Pulitzers are also awarded in music, breaking news, breaking news photography, and local reporting. Yeah, local reporting. I wonder if they're going to make a Pulitzer category for uh, trivia show hosts. I want to put my name in the running right about now, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of things in the running, here comes question number three. It was a victory hundreds of years in the making. On June 4, 1919, the U.S. Congress approved what amendment guaranteeing the right to vote to women? That's women of all kinds, ladies and gentlemen. Black, Asian, white, married, single, of age. Once again, the question, it was a victory hundreds of years in the making. On June 4, 1919, the U.S. Congress approved what amendment guaranteeing the right to vote for women? Ah, yes, and you know what? The fact that they didn't do this sooner, you know, is really stupid. Because women, they're smart. They know stuff. And, of course, they should have been able to vote way back when. We probably wouldn't be in um, much of the mess that we're in right now, but that's neither here nor there for me to say. By the way, the correct answer is the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment, it enfranchised 26 million American women just in time for the 2020, and I'm sorry, the 1920 election, 1920 election. So there you go. We got a 13th team joining us. Hello, Furious Volvo. Good to see you. Retail Rail, well, you're in the middle. It's 8th and RCB44, you're up top, 138 points. Yay. Let's move on. Number four. Happy birthday to Angelina Jolie. In 2007, the groundbreaking actor, born in 1975, was animated in motion capture to play the mother of what literary monster? <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those uh, two or three part questions. 
Once again, happy birthday, Angelina Jolie. In the year dos mil siete. And that, that's seven in Spanish, right? Yeah, seven in Spanish. I'm checking with the off-screen judge, by the way. <laughs> the groundbreaking actor born in 1975 was animated in motion capture to portray the mother of what literary monster? Of course, you got four monsters on your screen, only one of which is correct. Which one? <laughs> because, of course, going back to our running joke of things that Craig Reed has not seen, he has not seen Grendel. That's right, Grendel. Quote, I was told I was going to be a lizard, Jolie said about the unlizard like role. Yeah, Grendel. <laughs> All right, most of you guys knew that one. Way to go. RCB still up top by about nine points over I Am the Lorax. Let's see what happens with question number five in tonight's round of History Mystery. Question number five. On June 4, 1855, U.S. Army Major Henry C. Wayne departed New York aboard the USS Supply on a mission to bring back what creatures to the United States to serve as military pack animals? Hmm. Military pack animals. Now, of course, if you have no idea what the correct answer is, if you read the clue hard enough, you should be able to take a guess based on the words that are in the clue. Once again, the clue. <laughs> on, on this day in 1855, U.S. Army Major Henry C. Wayne departed New York aboard the USS Supply on a mission to bring back what creatures to the United States to serve as military pack animals? Military pack animals. Of course, I could be emphasizing the wrong word in this question, but hopefully you select the correct answer of camels. Camels. The attempt to use camels in the American Southwest fizzled out after the Civil War, and that's why they don't exist here anymore. So there you go. Oh, we got a new leader, Jennifer Michael. Hi, you're up top of 206, RCB, not too far behind, with 203. Question number six. On June 4, 1984, the day born in the USA was born, what part of Bruce Springsteen's body is visible on the album's iconic cover? Now, if it helps you any, there wasn't that um, black and white label that says, you know, graphic things and whatnot. Once again, on this day in 1984, the day born in the USA was um, born, what part of Bruce Springsteen's body is visible on the album's iconic body? Yeah, <laughs> iconic cover. There we go. That's the word I should say, cover, not body, because that's um, redundancy right there, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, four answers on the screen. One is correct. Which one? <laughs> I mean, I listen to music. I hope you do too. And you should know his butt is the correct answer. Yes, his butt. Born in the USA. Produced a whopping seven top ten singles in the United States alone. Yeah, seven. Most albums barely crack five. So there you go. Question number seven in round one. It was a landmark literary event. On June 4, 2018... Writer James Patterson published a novel, Missing, with collaboration with what man? Ah, uh, yes, it's a presidential ball question. Yay, presidents and or balls. <laughs> really don't know where I was going with that one. Once again, uh, it was a landmark literary event. On June 4, 2018, writer James Patterson published a novel, The President is Missing. His collaboration with what man? Now, if you were to read the choices on your screen, you would notice that they are all four former presidents. But which one is the correct answer? Hmm. I mean, I know it because I'm looking at it right now. And also, I think he played the sax on the Animaniacs. We're talking about Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. An adaptation of the presidential thriller is currently being developed by Showtime. Showtime, of course, owned by CBS, owned by Viacom, has no affiliation with the show whatsoever. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Last question in the round. Tense up, ladies and gentlemen. The clue goes like this. Happy Flag Day! Yay! June 4 is when the Simustavulge, or Black, Blue, White, referring to its three horizontal bands, is celebrated in what former Soviet Republic? 
Mm, another finger. Once again, happy flag day. June 4 is when the Simulsevalge, or black, blue, white, referring to its three horizontal bands, is celebrated in what former Soviet Republic? Now, of course, for answers on your screen, which one is a former Soviet Republic? That's up to you to figure out because, honestly, at this point, um, I'm still I'm still humming the theme to where in the world is Carmen San Diego in my head? Where in the world is this covert dancer? I'll tell you where it is. It's in Estonia. Itsi Ilpu Poev, or National Flag Day, occurs on the last date the flag was consecrated in 1884. So there you go. It's the black, the blue, and the white. Yay Flag Day in Estonia. All right, so those are your questions in round number one. But before we get to round number two, we're going to take this time to cheers all of you and say thank you for playing the Trivia Matic Happy Hour. Oh, yeah, scores. RCB44, you got 343 points. I'm Delorax, you got 312. Jennifer Michael, 278. Retail Railwell, you got 263. Sinful, Sinful Plinth Splinter, you got 237. Boont G, you got 224. Cat People, 217. Crossword E's, 167. Chase the Who, 162. Skedaddle Canoodle, 146. Dave's not here. We still got to find Dave. You got 127. Lauren Adams, hi Lauren, you got 121. Furious Volva, 72. Ugly, you got 43. Samuel, um, yeah, Smell Cookie, you got 89, you got 28. And Biddy Bunny, hi. Bitty Bunny. Of course, we will hear lots more from you guys as we move on with the rest of the game. Like I said, cheers. Mm. For those of you wondering, I'm drinking a watermelon slushy, and it is fantabulous. Let's move on to round number two. Round number two, the first of our two theme rounds. Theme for this round, Snake Eyes. Theme for this round, Snake Eyes. If there's anything Reddit all has taught us, is that animals make everything better. And games are no exception. Just answer these questions about animals in popular games. So these questions are about animals in popular games. By the way, uh, no animals in tonight's game, unfortunately. Um, we do. Oh wait, no, there's an animal. It's a it's a Ethic College bomber. Here are some questions. Number one: Raising over 8.75 million on Kickstarter, Exploding Kittens is a hugely popular party game featuring illustrations by Matthew Inman. Of what online comic site? Now I've never played Exploding Kittens before, but I have had I do have friends who have played that game, and from what I can tell, it is a fun game. It's kind of along the same lines of uh, Cards Against Humanity or something like that. Yeah. So once again, uh, raising over eight point seven five million dollars on Kickstarter, Exploding Kittens is a hugely popular party game featuring illustrations by Matthew Inman. Of what online comics site? Again, four answers on your screen. Only one of which is correct. Which one? You tell me. That's what you're here to do. I'm just here to confirm that you got it correct. Speaking of confirmation, the oatmeal is the correct answer. Setting the record in 2015, to date, the game has more backers than any other game by a margin of about 55,000 people. Uh, eight of which are probably watching this YouTube right now. And 13 of which, sorry, 16 of which are playing the game via the app. Way to go. You're all awesome. I am the Lorax here in first place, by the way. Let's move on. Question number two. Root might be the cutest war game ever. Its base game pits birds, foxes, and a raccoon against the cat that holds what title? Suggesting she could be the wife of the author of 120 Days of Sodom. 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 I feel like there's a song in there, but I just don't know all the words. Once again, Root might be the cutest war game ever. Its base game pits birds, foxes, and a raccoon against the cat that holds what title? Suggesting she could be the wife of the author of 120 Days of Sodom. Sodom. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are just tuning in, my name's Craig Reed. I'm I'm a nut. By the way, the correct answer is Marquise. Marquise. Rumors of a link between Marquise de Cat and Marquise de Sade 
is totally made up by us. Yeah. See, we're, we're creative people. Uh, Chinesky's in the room. Hello, Chinesky. Good to see you. Uh, he's um, there. We also got Furious Volva, RCB44, still in second place with 384. Let's move on. Number three, Snakes and Ladders. Dates back to the second century CE in what nation? Where the game was tied to Hindu philosophy. Hindu philosophy. Not related to, of course, um, I, know, I won't say that. Once again, Snake and Ladders dates back to the second century CE in what nation where the game was tied to the Hindu philosophy? Oh, man, I remember playing this game, Snakes and Ladders. Um, uh, again, my, my summers in Jamaica, uh, we, we would play all sorts of board games. Snakes and Ladders is one of them. Uh, it was very popular with us kids. And, of course, Snakes and Ladders did lead to me creating my own very own board game, which I will tell you about in a couple of minutes, because this, the time for this question is just about over. Make sure you hit an answer, ladies and gentlemen, because we want to make sure that you get some points so you can get, built, um, get up that leaderboard. By the way, correct answer is India. India. If you were a kid, you might have played Shoots and Ladders. Turns out snakes are scare kids, but slides are fun, and fun sells. Did I play Snakes and Ladders? I think I was talking about Shoots and Ladders. Good thing I didn't say that. All right, you see the scores. They are what they are. Sinful, <laughs> Sinful Plinth Splinter, you're in third place with 375. RCB 44 to 424. And I am Dolorex, you're in first place by about 21 points. Yay. Mm. Let's keep going. Number four. In the name of a popular children's game, what adjective describes the characters whose little-known names are Henry, Homer, Harry, and Lizzie. Really? Lizzie? Not Henrietta? Anyways. In the, in the name of, popular, of a popular children's game, what adjective describes characters whose little-known names are Henry, Homer, Harry, and Lizzie? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I will say this much, you know, this round has taken me back some years. Uh, again, another game of my childhood. I think most of you guys should know this one. But if you don't, um, I, I'm, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, th those three H's and Lizzie, they were all hungry. That's right. Presumably, Lizzie Borden was not that hungry. Hungry hippos namesake. Thank you, writers. <laughs> Lizzie Borden. Scores. Most of you knew that one. Way to go. Uh, let's move on. Question number five. Perfect for a nerdy date night. The Fox in the Forest is a two-player game belonging to what genre that also includes euchre and spades? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> One more time, perfect for a nerdy date night. The Fox in the Forest is a two-player game belonging to what genre that also includes euchre and spades. I tried to do a Alex Trebek genre. And genre, genre, you know. I, 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 it's the way that he uh, puts the emphasis on the that um, makes it fun, by the way. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you why I'm laughing in a moment. Uh, nerdy date night, Fox in the Forest, two-player game belong to what genre? That is, of course, press. Sorry, that's wrong. Trick-taking. Yes, it's a trick-taking game. While the original game was strictly competitive, a cooperative variant in entitled Duet came out in early 2020. By the way, Press Your Luck, great game show. If you haven't seen it, check it out on Hulu. Uh, new version with Elizabeth Banks. Oh, my God, that first episode. What a treat. I think if you like game shows and random lights flashing around the screen you will enjoy press your luck but that's enough about me let's go on question number six the twilight imperium could have been called space lions and other cool things but it wasn't blame fantasy flight games the company behind an entire card game series whose name is a nod to what lovecraft town Twilight Imperium could have been called Space Lines and other cool things, but it wasn't. Blame Fantasy Flight Games, the company behind an entire card game series, whose name is a nod to what Lovecraft town. 
Now, uh, for those of you watching, um, the reason why I was cracking up at the Press Your Luck, uh, one, Press Your Luck is my favorite game show of all time. Two, um, back, I want to say 2003. That, that sounds about right. But back in 2003, I created a board game called Roll Your Luck, which is essentially Press Your Luck on a board. The correct answer is Arkham. Arkham. For the, un for the uninitiated, Twilight Imperium games can last over eight hours and carries a non-zero probability of ending at least one friendship. And, um, yeah. So that's why you don't play that game. Another game that can end some friendships? Monopoly. Fun fact. Let's move on. Number seven. Sparky the Stunt Dog is a zombie murdering good, good boy from Dead of Winter. A board game that came out in 2014 during the peak of what Daryl Dixon machine? Hmm. Once again, Sparky the Stunt Dog is a zombie murdering G-O-O-D. A uh, good boy. A board game that came out in 2014 of what Daryl Dixon <laughs> Daryl Dixon Machine. Uh, from the Trivia-Matic YouTube, here's a tip. Don't play Monopoly. Play a better game like, you know, any other game. Like, Dominoes. But, uh, yes, if, if I were better prepared, I would actually show you Roll Your Luck. I think um, I, I might disappear in a little bit and show you Roll Your Luck because it is a pretty fantastic game. And the fact that 15-year-old me created that, that's pretty cool. Correct answer, by the way, is The Walking Dead. We can't prove they stole the idea, but in 2018, Daryl Dixon did get a good, good boy of his own. He named his dog, Dog, because dog, dogs are awesome. Yeah, you know what else is awesome? Cats, cat people, you're in the middle. 217, uh, 200, nope, that's wrong. Uh, 359 points. Oh, so, yeah, um, yeah we'll, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Let's keep going. Quite last question around, round, up, ladies and gentlemen. Sticking with The Walking Dead. Season 10 regular Thora Birch starred in the first installment of a movie series based on what monster fighting spell casting game that's all over Stranger Things. I'll give you a hint. Pokemon is wrong. <laughs> Once again, sticking with The Walking Dead, Season 10 regular Thora Birch starred in the first installment of a movie series based on what monster fighting spell casting game. This game, by the way, is all over Stranger Things. Like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, Craig's drinking uh, watermelon slushy. What's in it? Watermelon. Watermelon, well, watermelon soda, courtesy of Trader Joe's. And, of course, rum. Or is it vodka? I don't know. Alcohol! Correct answer is Dungeons and Dragons! Rawr! The first time we meet the main cast of kids, they are playing D&D, &D, and several key plot points involve D&D &D references. So there you go. That does it for round number two. Give yourselves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. You're all doing amazing. Speaking of amazing, let's take a quick look at the scores. Boone to G, you're at 507. Retail Rail Well, you're at 529. RCB 44, 597. Sinful Plinth Splinter, you got 602. And I am Delorax again, holding on to a slim lead with 626 points. Everybody else, you have less than 507. But I'm quite sure you'll get back in the game. We got lots of game left to go. I believe in you. You're all awesome. You got this. Round three. Everybody hurts. That's right, everybody hurts. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Bite the bullet and answer these eight questions about people with painful sounding names. You know, everybody hurts. So eight questions about um, painful, people with painful sounding names. Here we go. Numero uno. A whole generation will probably most associate John Hurt with Potter versus Mr. Olvander. A Diagon Alley purveyor of what wizarding essentials? Yeah. Once again, a whole generation will probably associate John Hurt with Potter versus Mr. Olvander, a Diagon Alley purveyor of what wizarding essentials? Wizarding essentials. So before the show began, ladies and gentlemen, my girlfriend pretty much whipped this all together. She um, had some frozen watermelons that she 
chopped up, put into this. Um, and yeah, mix it together with some, some rum and some other stuff. And yeah, this is very delicious. By the way, the correct answer, Wands. Wands is the correct answer. Ollivander reportedly means he who owns the olive wand. There are rumors of Mediterranean heritage. So there you go. Wands. Oh, there's a glitch. Well, hey, cheers. Drinking time. Mm. This is really good. I wish you were having this for me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give you question number two. In 1995, the simultaneous discovery by a professional and an amateur of Comet Hale Bop marked the first time scientists detected what noble gas, the most abundant on Earth, in a comet. Wow, man, this is really good. It's behind my dresser. Once again, <laughs> in 1995, the simultaneous discovery of a professional, by a professional and an amateur, of Comet Hale Bop marked the first time that scientists detected what noble gas. This gas is the most abundant gas on Earth, and they'd have found this gas in a comet. The first time they found this gas in a comet. Of course, four answers are on your screen. Which one's correct? Eh, you should figure it out. I know you can figure it out. You guys are smart. You know this. By the way, the correct answer is argon. Argon. Argon's high sublimation temperature suggests that it was formed in the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune. You know, where other lesser planets are out there, like uh, Mickey's dog. Woof! Ooh, RCB44 getting back into lead. Only seven points on top of I Am The Lorax. It is very tight at the top. Sinful Plinth Splinter still in the game with 648 points. Let's move on with question number three. Slash played guitar on the aptly titled Rockstar 101 from what mononymous pop star superstar 2009 album entitled Rated R? You know who else was Rated R? Edge. He was a wrestler. I think he still is Rated R. He's still wrestling, by the way. Yeah. Way to go, Edge. Once again, the question slash played guitar on the aptly titled Rockstar 101 from what mononymous pop superstar's 2009 album Rated R. Now, I did allude to this, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit earlier, and I think I have about three seconds, so I'll do it really quickly. Here it is, the nationwide debut of Roll Your Luck. Ooh. Uh, there, there's a lot of squares and colors and stuff like that. We'll talk a little bit more about Roll Your Luck in a little bit. Correct answer, by the way, is Kriana. Rihanna, Slash is a prolific session musician, working with everyone from Michael Jackson to high school classmate Lenny Kravitz. That's right, Lenny Kravitz, high school classmate with Slash. Fun fact, Lenny Kravitz, somewhat related to Al Roker. Yes, Lenny Kravitz and Al Roker are cousins. Don't believe me? Look it up. I am the Lorax, still up top. Let's move on. As the monster, T-Pain won the first season of The Masked Singer, which uses a tune by what CSI-approved classic rock band for their theme song? I would read the question again, but... Uh, oh my god, just, just look at all this. Ladies and gentlemen. You start here, and you, you, you just go around the board, you roll the die, you try not to hit those yellow squares that say lose everything, and it, it's, it's, it's a fun game. I remember many, many drunken nights playing Roll Your Luck in college and post-college. And let's just say that all my friends enjoyed it. They all had a good time playing Roll Your Luck. Why I don't play it more, um, I, I guess I just need to bring it up in more parties. But just look at all that colored pencil detail, ladies and gentlemen. It is just amazing. By the way, the correct answer is The Who. The Who. Who are you is the theme. Just like in the original CSI. You know, who are you? I know who I am, but who are you? I don't know. Let's figure that out. Also, let me know what you think of Rolly Luck in the comments. I'll probably read them at some point. But let me read this next question, question number five. Playwright Gertrude Elizabeth Blood was the subject of a portrait by what painter? Who's best known for 1871's Arrangement in Grey and Black Number One. 
Oh, that's that's the title of one thing. Let's try this again. <clears throat> Playwright Gertrude Elizabeth Blood was the subject of a portrait by what painter? Who's best known for 1871's arrangement in gray and black, number one. Uh, again, folks, four answers on your screen. Only one of which is correct. Which one is it? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Triviumatic, uh, we should have had spinning time by now, but we didn't. This is the first time in a very long time that we did not have spinning wheel time. So, yay! We are working out the kinks, ladies and gentlemen. i like to thank all of you for just being you. By the way, the correct answer is James Whistler. James Whistler. Arrangement in gray and black number one is better known as Whistler's mother. Lady Campbell, nee, nee blood, made a name as an author, athlete, and socialite. And not Whistler's mother. Hmm. Who haven't I really spoke to too much? Crossword E's 502, Cat People 492. Dave's not here. I really love your team name. Dave's not here. You know what? Way to go, Dave's not here. Let's keep going. And, of course, knock on wood, no spinning wheel time after question number six. Actor Mamie Gummer's earliest role was alongside her mother, Meryl Streep, in what Sleepless in Seattle writer-director's semi-autobiographical Heartburn? Huh. I'll read this again. Actor Mamie Gummer's earliest role was alongside her mother, Meryl Streep. Really? Didn't know Meryl Streep had children. Um, those two actors were in what Sleepless in Seattle writer director semi autobiographical work entitled Heartburn. Hmm. Heartburn is the name of the work. Uh, <laughs> who is the person who wrote and directed Sleepless in Seattle? I think that's what we're going for in this question, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man, that's really good. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Time's up. Hopefully, you know your Nora Ephron. There it is. So, the uh, Mamie Gummer also played a younger version of her mom in 2007's Evening. She also done plenty of movies on her own. Way to go, Mamie Gummer. By the way, the spinning wheel moved from question four in round three to question six in round three because I believe for a while there were two instances where the spinning wheel happened. And yeah, heartburn was what I was trying to say. Okay, let's move on. Number seven. Since his predecessor, William Quinn, only served one term, in what decade did Jack Burns serve as the second governor of the state of Hawaii? Hawaii. Kind of reminds me of that game show, game show Press Your Luck. Uh, Peter Tamarkin would say, oh, stop at Kauai. Kind of, kind of emphasizing that E at the end because... Everyone wanted to go to Kauai. It was like a quintessential game show prize. You know what else is a quintessential game pro game show prize? A Flocati rug. I think one of these days we might have to give away a Flocati rug during Triviumatic. Of course, don't hold me to it because... Yeah, just don't hold me to it. I'm not in that position of power. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I just imagine me. Hey, uh, Triviumatic, let's give away a Flocati rug. I'm sure people will enjoy that. You know what else people would enjoy? The 1960s. <laughs> yes, that's right. Hawaii became a state in 1959 and Burns took over as governor in 1962. By the way, Hawaii, it's up there on that list of places that Craig Reed needs to go to. You know where else Craig Reed needs to go to? I am the Lorax here in first place with 897 points. This is it. Last clue in the round. Tense up, ladies and gentlemen. Get your drink in hand because we're going to take a break right after this question. Here we go. Number eight. Sting's album, Ten Summoner's Tales, is a play on his family name, Sumner, and a character in a classic story collection written by what author? <laughs> the fact that the Triviumatic YouTube account knows what a Focati rug is just maze, makes my day. Actually, I had a Focati rug in college. I didn't keep it because it got dirty really quickly, and college Craig did not know how to clean a Focati rug. Nor would I think a purple Flocati rug go well with just about anything in my current apartment. Once again, Sting's album, Ten Sumner's Tales, is a play on his family name, Sumner, and a character in a classic story collection written by what author? 
Oh, I know that author. That's Jeffrey Chaucer. Jeffrey Chaucer. If you ever wondered what an early 90s album of lute-inflected songs inspired partly by the Canterbury Tales sounds like, then you got that one. Yeah. Jeffrey Chaucer. All right, so those are your answers. Round number three, Everybody Hurts. Let's give you some scores. Biddy Bunny, hey, you're still around. Good to see you, Biddy Bunny. You got 65 points. Yay, you're on the board. Sam Smell Cook, 89, 227. Lauren Adams, 389. Jace to who? I think he's playing all the way in London. He is a fan of my other game, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, 440 points. Furious Vulva, 447. Skedaddle Canoodle, 507. Dave's Not Here, 539. Cat People, 577. Ugly. 595. You're not that ugly. Crosswordy, 616. Jennifer Michael, 618. Boont G, 717. Retail Railwell, 732. RCB, 44, 816. Sinful Plinth Splinter, 867. And finally, I am the Lorax, pulling away from the crowd with 941 points. Now, it is time for my personal favorite round, the pick three. Now, this round is a little bit different from the other rounds that we were playing early on in tonight's game. Instead of asking you straight trivia questions, I am going to give you a category, and you must select the three al three items on your screen that best fit that category. Now you will receive full value of the amount of points left on your ticker if you select all three correct answers. You will receive half the value of the points left on your ticker if you select two of the three correct answers, and you will receive no points whatsoever if you only select one of the three correct answers because you're guaranteed to get at least one of them correct. So a lot of points on the line, ladies and gentlemen. The first clue, or the first category, Romancing Meg Ryan Movies. Romancing Meg Ryan Movies. Five answers on your screen. Three are correct. Get the three that are correct. You win a lot of points. By the way, cheers. Ah. This room is really Romancing Meg Ryan movies. Now, obviously, we are looking for movies that have Meg Ryan. Mm. Make sure my mustache looks good on TV. Could get picked up by a network. By the way, correct answers. We got Sleepless in Seattle. City of Angels. In French Kiss, Tom Hanks, Nick Cage, and Kevin Klein are the Meg Ryan Curious dudes in each of those movies. Uh, by the way, Nick Cage was in City of Angels, and Kevin Klein was in French Kiss. What happens in Vegas in autumn in New York? No Meg Ryan. So, there you go. Let's move on. Question number two. We're looking for the first letter of four or more U.S. states. Excuse me. First letter of four or more of U.S. states. So, these are U.S. states, numerous of them, four or more U.S. states start with three of the following letters. Which three? Oh. Um, by the way, if it, uh, by the way, I told you earlier about Press Your Luck uh, with Elizabeth Banks. Um, for the, if you do watch that episode that's currently on Hulu, for the for the eagle eye and people who are enjoy a good running joke, you might notice there is a Fulcati rug on the board, and that is a 40-year-old joke because at, in the 80s, no one knew what a Fulcati rug was. And by the way, the correct answers are M, N, and I. I believe those states are Indiana, Illinois, Iowa. Uh, what's the other? What's the other I state? Indiana, Illinois, Iowa. I know there's another I state. But anyways, uh, S only starts South Dakota and South Carolina. C begins the names of three states, but not four or more. So there you go. Those are your scores. I am Delorax still up top. You're breaking the 1,000-point barrier. Way to go, I am Delorax. We are looking for things that are made with potatoes. Things that are made with potatoes. <laughs> of course. I would forget Idaho has the other I state. Duh. By the way, Idaho is not on your answer list. Um, 
because it's not made with potatoes. But we do get a lot of potatoes from Idaho. Fun fact, make sure you play the Trivia Manic Happy Hour game every night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Tommy Dickey will be hosting tomorrow night's game from Los Angeles. Of course, this still happens at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and whatever time that is on your time zone. So be on the lookout for Tommy Dickey tomorrow, hosting the Trivia Matic Happy Hour. That should be fun. I like Tommy. He's, he's good people. Yeah. It's made with potatoes. All right, time's up. Correct answers. Kanish, Cole Cannon, and Alu Gobi. Alu Gobi. Pozzoli is a stew, and beaver tails are delicious Canadian fried dough. Ah, Canada. All right, Iron Delorex still up top. Sinful Plinth Splinter trying to break the 1,000-point barrier. And RCB 44 sitting pretty in third place. Let's keep going. We are looking for CSI Cities. CSI Cities. Now, this will be the portion of the show where I would sing the song by The Who, but unfortunately, that would inv invoke rights, and I don't think we have the right to sing that song, so I'm not going to sing that song. Instead, what I am going to do, uh, I'm going to show off um, this board game, because I think I, I think we have the rights to this. I hope we have the rights to this. Uh, John Chinesky, I know, I, know you're play, I know you're watching the YouTube, John. Would you play this game? Actually, I'll throw it out to the entire YouTube chat. Would you play Roll Your Luck? It Honestly, I like it, but that's half because I created it. And if you are confused, we're looking for cities in the name of a CSI franchise TV show. Oh, by the way, time's up. Correct answers. We got, we got Miami, New York, and Las Vegas. New Orleans is an NCIS show, and Milwaukee had Laverne and Shirley. Scores, you see them where they are. Uh, most of you guys only need two of them. Interesting. Oh, yeah, that's right, because the original CSI never says its city name. It just says CSI, and you shouldn't know that. Anyways, Variables in Newton's second law of motion. Variables in Newton's second law of motion. Of course, three answers are on your screen. Sorry, five answers are on your screen. Three are correct. Which three? That's up to you to decide. Speaking of five answers. Now, earlier in the show, I did give a shout out to Jace Who. Jace Who is in London playing this game. Uh, he started following me when I hosted another trivia game called Five Questions on Periscope. Now, Five Questions has since moved to Instagram on the game show, Craig, Instagram chat, on the Instagram channel. So if you want to pre-game before the happy hour on Thursdays and Friday nights with me, game show, Craig, Play five questions on my Instagram channel. It's a lot of fun, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, those correct answers are force, mass, and acceleration. But why do photons have such great abs? Planks, of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, writers, for that one. <laughs> We're looking for Wendy's copyrighted food products. So these are food products copyrighted by the Wendy's company. And hopefully you do know what Wendy's is, because if you don't, then I can't help you with that. So food products copyrighted by Wendy's. Five answers on your screen. Three are correct. Which three? Oh. Uh, Oh, yes, the acceleration of an object is produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. That, of course, is Newton's second law of motion. And you know what else was mentioned in Newton's second law of, of motion? Dave's double, son of Baconator, and Frosty. Son of Baconator also has a father named Baconator. By the way, it should be Mr. Baconator to you. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, the original $6 Thick Burger, that is Carl's Jr., and a double-double is Kimmy's favorite thing to order from In-N-Out Burger. By the way, if you have never, ever been to an In-N-Out Burger, oh my God, you need to go. So the next time you go to California, In-N-Out Burger, okay? Do that for me, please, because you'll, you'll be amazed by just how delicious and freshly made 
the In-N-Out Burger is. Ask for an animal style. It'll be great. Trust me. Now, anyways, I spoke too long. I already moved on to the next question. Norwegian loan words is the category for this one. Norwegian loan words. Fries are dry. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, the, the, here's the thing. Uh, in and out, the fries are the fries are okay because honestly, what you what you don't see like they don't really add too much to their fries. They take the potato, they peel it, they shuck it, and they fry it. That's it. I don't think they add like salt or anything to that. So that's why the in and out fries are meh at best. And it needs the sauce. By the way, Norwegian loan words, they are ski, slalom, and krill. That's right, krill. Portuguese is German. Armadillo is an adorable, is an adorable Spanish word for a little armored one. Armadillo. I believe there was an armadillo-like Pokemon. I forget his name. So, there you go. Uh, Sinful Plinth Splinter also broke the 1,000-point barrier in the last question, so way to go. And RCB44 is still sitting pretty in third place with 970. All right, let's go on. This is it, last question in the round. Number eight, we're looking for novels that lifted their titles from poems. Novels that lifted their titles from poems. Novels that listed, lifted their titles from poems. So, in, in other words, books whose title came from a poem that was published before the book, if that makes sense. That's right, it's a poetry ball question. Hey, poetry and or poems. Also, cheers. We're having a great time, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. There was a seed at the bottom of my drink. Thankfully, it did not move up far enough to uh, my mouth to cause issues. All right, so poetry ball question time is just about up, ladies and gentlemen. Correct answers of mice and men. I know why the cage bird sings, and for whom to tell, for whom the bell tolls. Of mice and men comes from Robert Pump Burns' poem "Cage Bird" from Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and for whom the bell tolls from John Dunn. Okay, this is it. I am the Lorax. You have about a 150, 147. 148 point lead over Sinful Plinth Splinter. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the final question of the night. It is the answer fast question. Now, the answer the faster you answer this question, the more points you can earn. Here's how. We have five all five clues point to the same one correct answer. The sooner you know that one correct answer, the more points you will earn. Now, keep in mind spelling counts. It is not case sensitive, so lowercase is fine. All five answers do point to the same one correct answer. If you don't know it soon, wait for easier clues. Of course, I will knock some time off the clock because answer fast. You want to earn a lot of points. You want to win tonight's game. You want to get that picture of the trophy, right? You do? Yeah. Also, last name alone is fine. Do not put a space before or after your answer. We are looking for a who am I? Here we go. Answer fast. Hint number one. I am an ornithologist known for my expertise on the birds of the Caribbean. My name is better known because of an author appropriated it. Sorry, because an author appropriated it because it sounded as ordinary as possible. For a lot of points, who am I? Once again, I am an ornithologist known for my expertise on the birds of the Caribbean. My name is better known as an author. Be Sorry, my name is better known because an author appropriated it because it sounded as ordinary as possible. For a lot of points, who am I? Remember, folks, because we're looking for a person, last name alone is fine. Who am I? All right, first clue, done. Second clue, now. Now, there we go. I am a fictional character. Created by that same author at a villa he designed himself and named after an intelligence operation conducted during World War II. The villa was located in Orcabesa Bay in Jamaica. For fewer points, what am I? Sorry, who am I? I am a fictional character created by that same author at a villa he designed himself 
and named after an intelligence operation conducted during World War II. That villa was located in Orcabesa Bay in Jamaica. Still there, by the way. For even fewer points, who am I? Got some ideas of still marinating on it, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you can figure it out. Let's keep going. Number three. <clears throat> of the various pies that I am based on, one was a 16th century English polymath. Sorry, one was 16th century English polymath, John D., who signed his letters to Queen Elizabeth I with a glyph to signify they were for her eyes only. For about half the points left on the clock, who am I? Once again, of the various spies that I am based on, one was a 16th century English polymath named John D, who signed his letters to Queen Elizabeth I with a glyph to signify that they were for her eyes only. Oh, I think I know it. I think I know it, but do you? Let's find out. Clue number four. The name of that Jamaican villa was Goldeneye. For... Less than half the points left in the game. Who am I? Once again, the name of that Jamaican villa was Golden Eye. I think you might know it by now. But if you don't, here we go. Last clue in the game for some points. I am a British super spy created by Ian Fleming and portrayed in the movies by various actors, including Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig, among others. I like my martini shaken, not stirred. Once again, I am a British super spy created by Ian Fleming and played in the movies by various actors, including George Lazenby, among others. I like my martini shaken, not stirred. I wear suits. I used to be a hit with the ladies. My name rhymes with Mame Schmom. What's the correct answer, guys? That's right, James Bond. Burder, burder, uh, despite starring in seven films, Roger Moore had whole hoplophobia, which is the fear of firearms. So way to go, ladies and gentlemen. You got through the Trivimatic Happy Hour. A plows to all of you. And now it's time for the final scores. Chinesky, 200. That's a great bowling score, by the way. Samuel, Samuel Cook, 89, 436. Biddy Bunny, I had hope for you. You did it, 502. Way to go. If I had my other trophy with me, um, you'd take a photo of that. Lauren Adams, 534. Skedaddle Canoodle, 643. Furious Volva, 785. Crossword Ease, 816. Uh, Jace Dehu, 830. Dave's Not Here, 858. Retail Rail Well, 868. Cat People, 905. RCB, 44989. Ugly, 1012. Sinful Plinth Splinter, 1047. <gasps> but that's fourth place in our top three. Boontiji, 1058. Jennifer Michael, 1103. And tonight's winner, walking away with everything. Congratulations to I Am The Lorax, 1488. The score for tonight's game of Trivia Matic. There we go. There you go. Take that photo. You're going to love it. It is the trophy. This is for you. I am the Lorax. Da 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 da. All right. So as you take that photo, don't forget, play the Trivia Matic Happy Hour every night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us on the YouTubes so we can get notifications for when the next game of the Trivia Matic Happy Hour happens on the YouTubes. Also, since we're talking about the internets, make sure you follow Game Show Craig on the Instagrams so that we can play some five questions with me tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern, whatever time that is in your time zone. Tommy Nicky will be here tomorrow night hosting the Trivia Matic Happy Hour. My name's Game Show Craig. If you really enjoy me, send me some love. There's my Venmo. There's my uh, PayPal. Game Show Craig. I'm Game Show Craig all over the place on the social medias. So follow me. Don't forget, um, uh, be kind to black people. Black Lives Matter. Word to your mother. We're going to have a good time. We'll get through this. Love you all. Mwah. Bye for now. Have a good night. Stay safe. All that other fun stuff. Music should be playing. We're, we're, we're going to get through this, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night.